Hello, everybody, and welcome to another MCAT Club meeting. This is our weekly call for Monday, December the 9th, 2013. My name is Don Osborne. I am the host of the MCAT Club. The MCAT Club is the place to go for up-to-date information about studying for the MCAT, MCAT prep, and I even answer your MCAT-related questions live here on the call. You can find the MCAT Club at Incorta.com, as well as on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Google Plus and Pinterest. And if there's another social media thing that's going to happen next year, I will probably be on that as well. So we've got some students on the call today, and I know that uh, one of our students, Sarah, she had some questions for me. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm a little chilly. It's getting wintry here in California. Uh, so I'm bundled up, and I've got a heater next to me, so I'm doing good. How about you? Um, same here. I'm in California, too. It's just it's getting chilly. I understand, but it's good. Yep, a little bit, a little bit. So uh, tell me the question that you have, or if you want to give me you know, some background first, go ahead. Um, sure. Actually, I think my question, my, um, it might benefit other students. Uh, and it is uh, basically how to deal with the test anxiety. And um, this is very new to me. I mean, um, I am, I've been a good student. I have graduated from a well-known um, California university with a great GPA. I have never had any problem with my academics in terms of GPA and regular testing during um, my bachelor's degree. But right now that I'm starting to take the full practice exam, I feel that um, I somehow I, I struggle with the test anxiety. The moment that the um, testing starts, it's somehow I I am cool I'm cool and until I hit something that I'm unsure of somehow the system in me kind of starts firing you know it's just I lose my con concentration I, I start losing my confidence and um, I get nervous about the time so it's kind of it kind of uh, gets on a spiral roll so that I basically kind of pause the test you know and sure. I know that I have the opportunity to do it right now, but uh, I'm so um, sure and I'm aware that I cannot do that during the actual MCAT test. Got it. Okay, very good. I love this topic. It's one of my favorite topics. And I have a bunch, a bunch of questions for you before I get into any kind of a prescription for what to do about it. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to just summarize back to you what I think you said is happening and then give you an opportunity to adjust it. What I think you said is this, that you feel fine when the test starts and that you're going along just fine and then there's a bump in the road of some kind, typically uh, a test question that you're unsure about whereupon you say you lose your confidence. Um, and when that happens, in the moment that you lose your confidence, could you describe what happens next? Sure. It's, it's kind of uh, when I lose my confidence at some question, and, um, you know, before, during a normal test in my school, I would go to other questions and I would get back to that one question and answer it. But somehow it's just uh, in MCAT tests or um, kind of tests basically that I'm taking, if I'm not sure of uh, something, somehow that lo loss of confidence uh, progresses into other questions as well. So I lose my concentration and I kind of cannot do even simple math for the questions that I know. Um, so it, it kind of disables me from actually doing the test. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to break this down even further. So here's what I hear, and please feel free to adjust this. You read a test question somewhere along the test, 
And when you read that test question, that particular test question gives you a feeling of uncertainty. And that feeling of uncertainty promotes a loss of concentration. And that loss of concentration expands into a lack of a loss of confidence. And then when you skip that question to move on to the next question, that overall feeling of lack of confidence continues with you and it makes your approach of the next question you feel equally uncertain. Am I correct? Exactly. Okay, so let me address this building upon what we talked about so far so far. You mentioned a moment ago that, you know, when you take regular academic tests, you feel very confident about your about your answers. Is that correct? Most of the time, yes. And I would uh, also say, it's been true for me too, that let's say it's a 20 or 30 or 40 question test, as I go through the questions and I answer more and more and more of them and I can see, oh, uh, clearly I'm getting it right, I'm getting it right, I'm getting it right, this is obviously the right answer. And all my work and all my study, everything is coming together to help me, to help me find those answers. As I go through the test, the farther I get into the test, the more confident I feel because I'm racking up more and more right answers. Have you experienced that also? Correct. Great. So now what I want to do is take that experience and apply that to the MCAT also. So how do we do that? Well, by discovering the answers that are confusing or that are in Dutch, is my metaphor to this, and setting them aside and continuing to find answers that are or questions that are relatively easy for you to pick the answers for, you're going to build your confidence because you're going to have over and over and over again, you're going to have the experience of, you know, oh, I got these, you know, for this eight questions or these six questions on this passage, I know for sure I got seven of them right, moving on. Okay, next passage. So I know for sure I got seven of these right, moving on. And so I, we make this exchange uh, of time for confidence. I'm going to give away this question in order to get time and confidence back. So I encourage you to give that an experience, to give that an opportunity, and to make that your experiential story of the MCAT. 